Hey guys, Kevin Cleary here with a knife video. I had set up to uh, do this video in the bush, but it's just a little, you know, it's a beautiful day right now, but the problem is it's been raining and so everything is pretty wet. So uh, I scrapped that plan and we're over here at the park. And I think you can see there are a couple people enjoying the park as well, but it's an absolutely gorgeous day. So I just couldn't go back and record this inside. I still wanted to be outside, but it was just too mucky to record where I usually do. So here we are. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the knife that I want to share with you guys today. There we go. We are going to be taking a look at the PMP Bulldog. Really interesting knife. And I have to say, I find small fixed blades really compelling. And you may go, Kevin, that's nuts. You know, you like big knives. And that's a little bit, you know, I like big folding knives. Okay, that's definitely true. But for fixed blades, you know, I don't mind a smaller size. And this one is, is kind of unique in that it's a pretty thick, hefty, small knife. So we'll talk about that as we get into it. Um, for my purposes, I find that the fixed blades I carry, they can be a little bit smaller because I'll often pair them with some other things, perhaps a larger folder like you're seeing there. Uh, but if it's if I'm doing outdoor type of stuff, then I'll pair my fixed blade with a hatchet or a folding saw or something of that nature. The, um, the other benefit of a smaller... Uh, a smaller fixed blade is that I do sometimes EDC fixed blades. And at this size, it's really, really comfortable to do. I think, you know, you saw my uh, Benchmade Crooked River and Cold Steel Recon 1 there. And, uh, you know, this is not all that much bigger than them. And in, in fact, it fits inside of, you know, sort of a front pant pocket really comfortably i you know for me anyway i have no issue with that you know i pop it in my pocket just like this this is how i most frequently carry this if i want to use it i can reach in i can extract it like that the only sort of hitch in that whole setup is that when you have it out you go and make the cuts that you're going to make when you go to put it back you're not just going to wiggle it around in your pocket you've got to you know switch hands at least this is what i do reach in your pocket take this out put it back in the sheath and then put it back in the pocket but when you're kind of done using the knife you have the luxury of taking the time to do all of that anyway let me give you a quick rundown on size and weight there are a couple of statistics or a couple of, of spec specifications i don't know why i call them statistics um a couple of specifications that are worth noticing here um Overall, this knife is only six and 15 sixteenths. Well, I guess, you know, basically seven inches, seven and seven sixteenths with the sheath. All right, so almost seven and a half inches with the sheath, three and a quarter inches on the blade, only three and three sixteenths grip area. That's a little less than what I normally want, but you know, I get that in this knife, you're making some sacrifices to, you know, have a very small compact option. All right, and so that's, you know, you kind of, that's the trade-off we're, we're making here. All right, um, 3.5 ounces without the sheath. When you add the sheath, it goes up to 4.14 ounces. And none of those numbers I find particularly troubling. You know, I, you know, there are, there are folding knives that I have that, uh, that come within that range. Now they're not gonna be quite this small. Okay, I will say that. So a folding knife where you're gonna have um, uh, you know, a thin handle or, or maybe an FRN handle or something could be a little lighter than that. I do want to make this one important point, and that is look at the blade stock on this knife. All right, let me just compare it to a couple of other blades so you can see there's a Recon 1. There's a Crooked River. Um, actually, I do have... Hold on, let me get this out of the sheath. Uh, I've got a Riot... Uh, tibia here from Skeleton Blade Works. And uh, the other knife I'll compare for this particular portion, trying not to knock my tripod over, is the Line Steel M4. All right, you guys all know the M4 is a very, very favorite knife of mine. And you can see this, the blade stock on the Bulldog is considerably thicker than all of those. And um, you know, that, that potentially creates a bit of an issue here, but the fact is this knife performs really, really well. It's pretty thin behind the edge. And I guess since we're kind of talking about that, let's get into this discussion. So three and a quarter inch drop point blade, high flat grind, satin finish, 0.23 
uh, or, or 23 thousandths behind the edge. All right, the stock is 730 seconds, so it's almost a quarter inch thick. And, and what I was saying there was that this cuts surprisingly well for what it is. Let me just demonstrate that for you for a second. Here. All right, I've got a, a stick here that was just laying nearby in the in the park. And, you know, I can, this is, is pretty decent in terms of, you know, a, a really obtuse angle and a really thick edge makes it much harder to do this. Um, you've seen this knife in other videos, cut cardboard and do a few different jobs. So it's, it's really decent in terms of a cutting tool. Uh, and, you know, yes, could you make this, you know, paper thin blade and super thin stock and make it like a paring knife? Well, of course you could. Um, that would lose some of the appeal, I think, of this knife. What makes this really cool is how thick and stocky it is. It's an absolute beast of a small fixed blade. And so it, that's what makes this really cool. To me, if this knife was, I don't know, an eighth of an inch thick, I, I, I wouldn't care about it quite as much as I do. It's that really overbuilt, crazy stock thickness that... Uh, that makes this appealing. All right. And the other thing I've got to say while we're talking about this is if you are a knife maker out there and you're going to make a big heavy duty knife like this, take a look at how PMP has done this because they've offered a stupidly overbuilt, tough, reliable, heavy duty little fixed blade here that's, you know, an absolute tank, but it still cuts well. And I can't tell you how many times I see sort of heavy duty type folders where they just throw cutting ability out the window in favor of making, you know, a pry bar that's got a sharpened edge on it. Uh, that's going to be tough, granted, but <laughs> that toughness is not helping me if I need a knife. All right. Um, and so, yeah, this is, this is a bit overboard. I, th I think that's fair. We can, we can agree on this point guys that uh, nearly a quarter inch of blade stock or of really stock thickness here is overkill. All right. But there's another feature that this ties into that I want to mention. Okay. So we've talked about the blade. We've, yes, it's, it's thick. Um, you know, if you're going to be stabbing this into something and having to, to pry on it, you know, this is not the worst choice you could make. Um, the other nice thing though that I have to say is notice how I don't have this wrapped. I don't have anything done with it because that stock thickness is so substantial that it's pretty comfortable in hand. It's not as comfortable, of course, as something where you've got a full handle. All right. So this is the, uh, the Kaiser Harpoon. Um, and this is a little more comfortable because of that handle, but short of, you know, in comparing this to comparing this to any other of sort of these slim, thin, um, minimalist type of knives that I have. And I've got a couple of them in the, in, in the, the collection right now, this is way better. And I don't even need to, to wrap it with paracord. It feels great. I suppose you could, you know, I would consider maybe doing a paracord wrap this way and following uh, this part of the skeletonized handle rather than coming all the way around. Cause I find these finger choils quite comfortable and I wouldn't want to lose that. All right. Um, so while we're talking about the handle, let's, let's carry on a little bit and point out that, yeah, these finger choils, if you had fingers way, way bigger than mine, they'd probably become an issue. I have like a size large hand and they fit pretty well. Okay. Um, and, and it's, pretty, you know, I, how do I say this? I look at this handle and I immediately have doubts. Okay. Let's put it that way. I kind of go, uh, this looks like a bad idea. But then when you get this in hand, I'm like, man, you know, it's not the most comfortable knife that ever existed, but it's certainly way better than I would have anticipated. And, and really for what this is, I cannot complain at all about the ergonomics. It's, it's quite well done. All right. Uh, the, the sheath here is just a simple fold over Kydex sheath. This is a really good option. I have tried a couple of different clips on it. Um, I did have a recommendation. I'm trying to think of the name. I think it's like an e-clip or something. Anyway, there's a clip. I'll put a link in the description uh, or even just put a descript, put a na the name of it down in the description for the clip that I've used on this. And it's not bad. I still prefer it just like this to drop in my pocket, but I have carried it with a, with a clip on it a couple of times. Now let's go ahead and get into some more sort of head-to-head -head comparisons. I said that I would... 
um, sort of bring up what I think is the nicest EDC fixed blade. And this isn't it, although it's not bad at all. All right, before we get to some of the other stuff, let's uh, let's drop in the Riot Tibia. Much more expensive, okay? Uh, a little nicer finishing, a little higher end overall, nicer materials, um, and certainly more stylish. But... Uh, man, you're going to pay for it. This thing, you know, is going to be around 300 bucks where this is, I think, nah, I want to say 70, but I think that's wrong. Let's go with 90. Okay. Um, so decent EDC fixed blade, decent EDC fixed blade for a much more affordable price point. Um, let's see here. The other one, I the, this is what I would argue is probably the best EDC fixed blade. This is the Kaiser Harpoon. This one is in D2. They used to be 1095 and I still get questions about that. I think sometimes people see um, a video where I'm talking about this one and they've seen my previous video and they're like, Kevin, what is wrong with you? you just, you've called it a completely different steel. It's because this is a completely different knife. Um, this one is in D2. The first run of which I did have one was in 1095. Okay, so that's what's happening there. With the coating, I don't really mind that it's D2. And you can see both of these are actually D2 and have held up pretty well. This is a little thinner. Okay, it's got a little more blade. All right, and you know, I could almost do a head to head comparison between these two, but for this will this will suffice. So what I like better about this is it to me, it's just as easy to carry. It's more comfortable in hand because of that layered uh, micarta handle which also looks fantastic by the way um and the flat you know this the thinner blade stock with the nice flat grind means this slices a little better as well um now if i could say this to kaiser uh, if you would come out with this in like vg10 or s30v or you know even 14c28n and forget the coating uh this would it would even it would even take this up one or two notches more and make it that much more spectacular okay so i want to make that uh, i want to make that point the other knife i'll bring in here is the old standard um this of course is the line steel m4 this is one of my favorite all around knives i use it uh, for outdoor stuff i use it occasionally for edc stuff i use it around the house this is a fantastic knife and it's probably my single favorite fixed blade um, the other contender that would be close to this would be the the uh, cold steel master hunter i don't have one here with me right now but uh, totally fantastic option um, a little less edc friendly than most of the other ones that we've been looking at over the last couple of minutes all right so let's get back to focusing just on the pmp bulldog here uh, what are my final thoughts on this knife guys i like this a lot it's a little steep all right the price point on this is is uh, i think as i said about 90 bucks i maybe maybe 10 or 20 dollars off but um it's you know closer to a hundred dollars than it is to fifty dollars let's just put it that way um but it carries pretty easily. You're getting this stupidly overbuilt um, design, which I do kind of enjoy and PMP is kind of known for, all right? Uh, and the D2 steel for me has held up really, really well. So uh, what I would say is, you know, positive review. I do like this. I would recommend it. Um, with some hesitation due to price point okay so there you go guys those are my thoughts on the pmp bulldog a knife that i i, I like this quite a lot uh, i so i would recommend it with just a little hesitation thanks a lot for watching don't forget to like and subscribe we will talk to you soon